Just a moment. It's August 19th. It's time for Watch a Week. By the way, these Watch Your Weekly intros have been fire. Oh, the ones that people are submitting, yes. Yeah. I thought you meant mine. Um, no, but yes. Oh, no, um, no, no, no. Definitely not yours. Yeah, they're really good. Ryan is not here, so I submitted my self tape for this segment and I got denied. But, you know, what happens when the main dude gets kicked out? You bring in the backup. What? No, the show hang on. must go on. <laughs> Back that up. Welcome to Watch Your Weekly, a show presented to you by Breather. And some of you ask, what is Breather? Breather is a service that allows you to book office spaces. Obviously, we're not in our Breather office right now. We're in our homes. But this is a show where we kick back, we chat, and answer your questions to the best of our abilities. Uh, and as always, if you'd like to submit questions for Watch Your Weekly, you can always swing by the C tab. That's the community tab on YouTube. You can also check us out at We Are Watcher, We Are Watcher, We Are Watcher, patreon.com slash watcher, youtube.com slash uh, uh, Watcher, Facebook.com slash Watcher Entertainment. We are watcher.tumblr.com is correct, yes. A fun week for me because Puppet History, baby, it's back. It feels good. It's out there. People have seen it. I'm sporting my Puppet University merch because I am an alumnus of PU, as you know, quite well. We also have this wonderful uh, notebook. But yeah, I'm very excited. There's a lot of good stuff. We, and we have more stuff uh, kind of in the pipeline. Watcherstore.com and check them out. So you're the only alumni of this school, but how do I become an alumni of Puppet University? Well, actually, yes, people have asked about this, but if you go to watcherentertainment.com slash enroll dash now, we are releasing a weekly kind of behind the scenes newsletter thing, maybe providing some, some facts that didn't make it into the episode. Our researcher for this season, Carrie Keppel, who worked on Carrie! Solved. Carrie! Just an absolute delight to work with. She's gonna be sort of, you know, about the research process, stuff like that. Also like kind of providing examples for like books you can read if you wanna know more about what we covered. It's gonna be real fun. Speaking of books, she has her own book you can buy. Check it out, it's very good. Yeah, she actually just released a book called Strong Women about women who have either been overlooked or like you don't hear a lot about. I think at least a couple of the episodes that we did this season uh, are chapters in that book. So there's some some really good stuff. Yeah. I have a question about this um, Enroll Now link, okay? Sure. Uh, because when I put my email into the internet, I, I make sure oh, that I, I cover all my bases. Is this one of those links where you put your email in and then when you hit unsubscribe, it takes you three weeks to actually unsubscribe and you have no. to <laughs> click all the boxes no, we're, to make sure you're off it? No. Or, or are we stuck <laughs> on this fair. list forever? I did see some people who were like, what am I signing up for? Which is fair because we don't tell them. We got a helicopter going by. Hello. No, we're not going to be using this for anything other than to just send you eight emails about our puppet show. We're not going to be selling it to uh, Vladimir Putin or anything. <laughs> we do reserve the right to email you in the future. But it'll only be puppet related. Yeah, yet. it's not going to be like Steven's Business School. Actually, that's a good Steven's idea. Steven's Business School. And we got a new episode of Puppet History coming out this week, episode two. It's very exciting. Uh, and at the end of today's Watcher Weekly, we have a fun segment where I am going to go into some exclusive see behind the scenes about the making of the puppets this season. I'm not going to show all the puppets, but I'll show some of the puppets. So stay tuned. That'll be here at the end of the show. Meanwhile, Steven, anything else for us to cover? We should do the chill zone real quick before we uh, move oh, on yeah. with the episode. Steven, how you been, bro? I went hiking with some friends. We all went to Zion because it's safe out there and it's just a few of us. And uh, there's this trail called the Narrows and you actually tread through algae water to get to the end of a waterfall. If you're feeling like the pandemic is getting you down, definitely go hiking because I cannot tell you the number it did on my soul. Uh, also, you can socially distance very well. Honestly, even when I've been on a, a very busy trail, you're still a good like 50 feet away from anyone at any given time. Like a busy trail means you might see five people yeah. <laughs> on your hike. There were signs that were saying that you should not bring open wounds into this hike because the algae water is known to uh, be quite vicious. Does it have like, does it have like uh, parasites in it or something? I think so. Amoeba, I think bad amoebas? They had some dogs that they were saying had like drank the water and got really sick. 
Ugh. Yeah. Nobody likes a sick dog. And I was able to do the whole hike without getting my spider bite infected. And now, wow. it's scabbed over. Grats on the scabs, bro. Thank you. Love a scab. I'm, I'm so happy scab. for your scabs. Just occurred to me, Ryan's missing out on all this scab talk. We didn't actually address why he's gone. He's just taking a, he's just out, out this week. Oh, I mean, I didn't even realize he was gone. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wait, here, here's how we, we can insert him by, by via my impression. Here we go. Okay. Are you ready? I'm ready. Are you ready for my, my Ryan Watcher weekly impression? What? <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. Wait, wait, let me, let me do one. Let me do one. Yeah. Where is he looking all the time? I don't what is he know. Looking at? I have no idea. Yeah. He's a weird guy. Well, I'm, uh, yeah, as I said, it can be very dangerous out there on those trails. Oh, as we travel on this trail, I'd like to say a big <laughs> thank you to our old buddies at Surfshark for sponsoring this episode of Watcher Weekly. That's right. You may think that your online information is safe, but as our online footprint increases, so does that risk. Now, yeah, Surfshark is a VPN service that protects your information by encrypting all the data you send through the internet. Another great reason to use a VPN is that content from streaming services can be restricted based on what country you're in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What country are we in right now? I don't even know. No. But with Surfshark, you can solve that problem by simply changing your location. Not only is that good for people who want to keep up with their favorite shows, but it's also handy for folks living in countries who want to censor and monitor their citizens. So right now, Surfshark has a really good deal on, this is my Ryan Regard impression, by the way, if you couldn't tell. Yeah, that's good, that's good. Surfshark has a really good deal going on using, using my link down below or the code WATCHER. You can get 85% yeah, off and you'll get three months free. So sign up today, yeah. protect yourself, and check out those tunes over in other countries. That's right. Ooh, this is a lasso. Just give me a whip. And finally, Surfshark offers you a 30-day money-back guarantee. I always love the uh, lasso move at the club. That, that's a classic Ryan Bagaro move right there. Oh, that's the only that's the only dance he does. Ryan yeah. only knows how to do sort of a. He does that. That's how he <laughs> yeah. always dances. We're not actually kidding either. This is actually <laughs> C-Tab, it's time for questions. Yes, we've got a lot of questions to get to this week. Let's get right into it. Here's a question from Patreon. Uh, and we'll be answering more of these over on Watcher Weekly Plus over at patreon.com slash watcher. Uh, from Taiti? Taiti. Apker. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Let us mm -hmm. know. How do you guys feel about fan interactions out on the street? I know some people don't mind saying hello or having a little chat, and others really prefer to be left alone. Pandemic aside, what are your thoughts? Mm. This is an interesting question. I don't mind them. I actually enjoy talking to people and seeing uh, the lovely faces of the fans that watch our content. I'm very socially awkward. So if you do run into me and you're like, wow, that was a weird experience, that's not, you're not alone. I'm a very like, goal oriented person so if i'm like on my way to something i'm like let's let's keep it moving right let's keep like i'm, I'm the business guy here at watcher i gotta keep things sure, moving i get it but uh yeah. i've seen you and ryan stop to talk to people completely forgetting what you're about to do it's weird because uh, it's not something you really get used to i'm also like a socially awkward person so it really hinges on like what the person is like i've had people who like will just point at me and say buzzfeed and then i'll be like yeah, uh, <laughs> and then I'll kind of just <laughs> keep on moving. But I've had a, a ton of people who are like, oh, hey, how's it going? Love BuzzFeed or love what you're doing over on Watcher. I remember when we first ran to somebody who mentioned Watcher. That was an in and out It was, yeah. We all went in for a lunch. Ryan was very excited. I think he took a photo with them. He ran back because we were like, it's very funny. Those were the first people to mention Watcher to us. And Ryan was like, I got to go back and get a photo with them. Yeah, which is part of the question. But pandemic. Not aside, I have had people approach me for photos or conversations in the pandemic. It's terrifying. Somebody wanted a photo and I was like, okay, but please stay there. Let's take a photo like yeah. 12 feet apart. Did you do, were you just behind them waving? Yeah, I was like, that's pretty funny. What do you got there, Steven? Oh, this one comes from Wobble the Goose. And it's, uh, I don't know where this question, what is this referencing to, but it says, have you, there been any moments while filming where you just thought, what the hell are we doing? The first batch of shows that we did, just solely because there was no feedback outside of our circle of 
producers and editors. Nothing was out there for public consumption, so we didn't know, we didn't know how well anything would be received. I remember specifically the first season of Puppet History, I was like, this is certainly something I'm investing a lot of time and creativity <laughs> into. And that's why it's it's so vindicating to have stuff go up and just, it's great to read comments on stuff that you've worked so hard on. I remember um, after Homemade, uh, we filmed Dumplings. It was so hot in that house because we turned off the AC yeah. for sound purposes. We were just sweating. We had just spent three hours making dumplings. I was always going to Brittany and be like, hey, like, I feel weird. I don't understand how I feel right now. <laughs> She's like, you say this after every shoot, it's gonna be fine. And yeah. It was always fine. I talked about this in the, uh, I put these up on Patreon. We have, for certain tiers I do, we all do commentaries for certain episodes. And I realized when I was talking through them, it feels like chaos and Brittany has witnessed this. I go to every shoot thinking like, oh boy, how's this gonna turn out? And then I leave thinking like either, well, that'll that'll turn into something. Very relieved, it's always relief. Yeah, that's not how I, I relief is not typically, I'm just like, uh-oh. It's like, <laughs> yeah, it's- <laughs> Good luck, I mean, Anthony and Josh and Lauren and Steven. Yeah, credit. Uh, <laughs> credit to our editors because they do a lot of the heavy lifting, but it's me knowing that they will take it and run with it. That's true. It's like that, sort of yeah. passing the baton. Here's one from uh, Patreon, Abandoned Tallahassee Shopping Cart. Very descriptive name there. Do you always put your shopping cart away? A trivial question, but um, maybe a it's good serious. time for a PSA. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. This, this feels like uh, very spiritually linked to our discussion a few weeks ago when Ryan was saying he would like to take people who don't use their turn signals and drop them into a volcano. Yeah, I feel the same way about people who just leave their carts out. They're turning their back on the greater good. What's worse, somebody who leaves their shopping cart behind or somebody sure. who rolls down their window at a stoplight and throws a piece of trash out the window. Probably the trash, because uh, the, the shopping cart is going to be put away. Sometimes I'll grab rogue shopping carts and just put them away. So there's good people out there who will do it. And granted, there's also people going out and picking up litter, but there's more of a chance that that litter is just gonna end up choking a, a squirrel or something, you know? Yeah. Well, let's do one more question. Okay, this yeah, one comes right. from Jennifer Gong. Hey, Steven, I noticed your hair is growing out and you haven't re-bleached or dyed it yet. Thanks for noticing. What color do you think you'll go for after quarantine is over, assuming that's when you'll re-dye your hair? Uh, I've been teasing this over with um, the patrons as well um, on like the live streams that we've been doing, but I don't know if I want to recolor my hair. The lady who dyed it was like, you really uh, touch up your roots a lot. I was like, yeah, I've been doing it for every few months for the last three years. And she was like, what? That causes damage, doesn't it? No, she was just like, you gotta let your, your head breathe. So maybe I need three years of breathing, okay? But uh, I was also thinking maybe I'll do it for a watch weekly segment. And you guys- So my you're not gonna it. give it a break at all? Well, this well I guess you're, they've, a break. they've had it's a break. Six months. Okay, I see. At some point, I'm gonna have to chop all my hair off and I thought it might be fun to just go nuts and die oh, wow. before then. I've never done that in my entire life. Cause I got, I got I'm, I've got too much. There's too much. It's too much. Uh, here's from Lucilla. Uh, when one of you comes up with a concept for a series, how do you know if it's worth pursuing or not? Mm. If it's not enough to really occupy your brain for long enough to pre-produce it, then it's probably not worth doing. Sometimes you don't know. Just the answer is, I, I don't know. Yeah, you don't but really you know. I think if you want to watch your own series, that is enough to make it. I'll say that. Yeah, if you're delighted by it, really, if it's worth, I mean, the question of worth pursuing is very up to like what your metric of success is, but I would say exploring something creatively uh, that you're interested in, it's probably worth pursuing. Does that mean it's gonna be a mega hit? No, but you'll learn something It's worth doing. By the way, huh? we should have made this the Midwest episode. I just realized we got two Midwest boys well, here. The, it's practically the end. So we blew it. We blew it. Oh well. You know what we're gonna be missing out on though? Midwest autumn. Uh, we'll wait, you know, when the crickets start to die down, the nights get cool and dewy, yes. wet leaves. Oh, the crunch. The crunch. Midwest, rise up. I'm sorry, I just said I'm just gonna Midwest, up. rise up. What are we doing next? What's our segment for today? We got a fun segment where I'm going to go into uh, some detail about the making of one of my puppets because for this season of Puppet History, obviously I had a lot more puppets to make. As with the entire series, I tried to up my game a little bit. I really had to sort of figure out a puppet 
making system. The Madei method of, of puppet manufacturing. I'm gonna talk about the creation of the train puppet from last week's episode, but I'll, I'll also show some of the other puppets and kind of talk about how I eventually landed on my puppet craft technique. Um, but without further ado, please enjoy a puppet tutorial. Whoa, hi everybody. I'm here in the watcher offices. Obviously there's no one else around, but I'm here to give you a fun sort of sequel to my lo-fi, pretty lo-fi, um, behind the scenes look. If you recall last season, I had a fun look at how the theater operated and that's mostly the same, except it's deteriorating a little bit this season, but nothing that we can't fix with a little uh, gaff tape. Um, but I wanted to give a little behind the scenes look at how I made the puppets this season. Cause obviously there's a lot more. There were eight episodes, so do the math. I'm not gonna show all of them, but I, uh, since the, the Choo Choo, uh, Sad Choo Choo episode aired last week and we've got another one airing this week, uh, I thought I'd show you uh, how I made them. I'm actually now going to toss it to a video from June. Yeah, I know I'm tossing to a video within a video that had been previously tossed to. I apologize, it's like Inception. So let's see uh, me in the middle of the puppet pit and then um, I'll, I'll bring it back here and show you the final product because I didn't I didn't totally capture the whole process. Look, man, I was busy, okay? Sorry, okay, let's take it back to June. <laughs> It is uh, Sunday, uh, Sunday something, I don't know, June, Sunday in June. We have uh, Puppet History coming up on Monday. Quick Puppet Rundown. I started making this with no real plan. And then at the end of it, I thought, okay, well, I will make it a puppet. Actually, this was a full box and I was like, I'll just cut something out of this. And again, using rubber bands to my advantage so that I can uh, make his mouth move. Because if, if you don't, you're really relying on the, the cardboard to like snap back up or down, which doesn't, doesn't always work. So great. Um, I was also not sure what kind of top I would put on this. I went with a hat. Feels right. The hat's kind of, I might, so it blows off the top like that. I might just put a little string in there so that it can still kind of jump up and down. Big question right now is where the eyes are gonna go. I'm not sure yet. We've, I, I was joking. Let me see how this looks. They might, that's pretty weird if they go on the front like that. But weird is my forte. The other option is in the back, which looks pretty normal. So maybe back there? I don't know, we'll find out. I'm gonna get some wheels on this. And then, uh, that's a train, baby. He's ready to sing about how sad he is that he couldn't uh, give a rhyme to Abraham Lincoln. Feel good about it. I've had a little bit of lead time on these first two episodes, so, um, the rest of the month, I think, there's about a week in between each shoot. Uh, so that's gonna be me on weekends, just working on puppets for the rest of June. But I can't go anywhere else right now, really. So who gives a shit? Okay. So yeah, it was a fun time in my life. I thought season one was a bit of a task, but season two, was uh, even crazier. Now we can take a closer look at the finalized uh, puppet. And as I was making them through this season, uh, I, I perfected the process even more. And I'll show you on a different puppet what I ended up doing. Uh, you can see here, he's actually missing his rubber band on this part, but uh, yeah, it's, it's really, I'm quite proud of him. He's maybe the most elaborate one from this season, uh, but I thought, you know, might as well start out with a with a bit of a bang. Uh, you can see where his eyes ended up, and I put a little uh, a little light on top of him. And yeah, he's just uh, a beautiful train man. You can see the wheels there. Uh, they're not functional. And yeah, I just ended up cutting. This also has like a bit of a lip. Oh, actually, you know what? I have a, a drawing of 
some of the blueprints for him. Anyway, so you can see here this, oh shit, did I just fucking break him? Shit. Anyway, uh, my hand just goes in there. I literally just made a box and was like, well, I'll just cut out a hole for my hand. I gotta fix this. Oh no, it's fine. It was just flapping. Uh, so that's our train. I haven't really perfected the, the process here. So now let me show you one from an upcoming episode. He's in the trailer, so you're gonna see him anyway. Here's this guy. Um, and he is sort of the first one where I really nailed my, my puppet method. I've got these sort of 90 degree angles to keep him straight. Because if you don't have those, then he kind of bends backwards. But you can see there's like a little bar up top and then a little thumb slot in the back. So then, just pop that in there and he's good to go. It just really fits in there quite nicely. Uh, and I still tend to put like a rubber band around it, which is why I have, why it goes like that so the rubber band doesn't slip off. There's this little catch here. Uh, but that's the shame of day method. I don't know if I can like, uh, maybe patent it. I don't know, but it's effective and I recommend it. If you're ever looking to make a puppet, this is the way to do it. There's probably a better way based on how many tiny bits of cardboard I was cutting out. But there you go. Um, these are the puppets for great camera work here. Some of the puppets from the upcoming season. There's more, there's more puppets coming your way. You're gonna love these fucking puppets, folks. You're really gonna love them. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope it's been informative. It's gonna be a good season. I got so many great puppets. And maybe some you haven't even seen yet. I don't know. Okay, bye. The Madei Method. Well, there you go. Yeah. Yeah, the Madei Method. I've always wondered how your brain works and I I still don't get it. It's mostly um, hot glue. And it's weird, you know, honestly, it's very intuitive because you just, you're like, well, what does my hand? You just put your hand on the cardboard and you're like, okay, I can put one of those things here, one of those things here, and you just sort of figure it out. There you go. Uh, there's a lot more puppets to see this season, so stay tuned. And this week we have uh, a story about a volcano. <gasps> oh, with our good friend Matt Rayall. I saw a lot of people guess this episode, actually. It's tough for me to pick favorites uh, this season, but it, this is a story I've wanted to talk about for a long time. It's pretty well known, but whatever. That's a good, that's a good one. All right. Uh, All right. This was a very wonderful, positive energy Midwest Watcher Weekly. I loved it. Well, you know, we're polite guys. We're polite boys. Not that Ryan wasn't raised right. His parents are wonderful people. His dad's a dentist, yeah. but nice to nice to hang with my bro, Steve. We should do this more often. People have been asking for we our show. Uh, that might come one day. You never know. Well, we'll do a show. You and I will do a show. 2021, we'll crack some. Whoa. All right, well, thanks for joining us. As always, you can follow us on our socials. We are Watcher. We are Watcher. We are Watcher. YouTube.com slash watcher, which you're on right now. YouTube.com slash watcher podcast. We are watcher.tumblr.com. And we also have a brand new website, watcherentertainment.com. Leave us a note there. Uh, say hi. And don't forget to enroll in Puppet University. We'll see you next week. Bye, everybody. Bye.